There's one thing that's made the biggest difference in our health and fitness and our body composition, and it's cooking most of our own minimally processed food at home. But I know what you're thinking. It's too expensive and it's too difficult. But is it really? Let's, Let's find, find out. out. We didn't used to cook most of our own food at home. Quite the opposite, actually. We would go out to restaurants three, four, five times per week, get takeout for lunch. And when we did cook at home, it was frozen pizzas, pasta, anything you could find in a box that was quick and easy to make. But gradually over time, we started taking back the control of our nutrition away from the restaurants and having it for ourselves to be able to make choices that line up with the people that we wanna be and the goals that we wanna achieve. And it's made a huge difference. So in this video, we're gonna overcome some of the objections that we hear when it comes to cooking food at home. It's too hard, it's too expensive. I don't know what to do. We're gonna break down those barriers and show you exactly how much money we spend per month on healthy groceries, minimally processed foods, break it down by categories into protein, carbs, all that kind of stuff. And even show you how much we spend per meal and compare that to how much you might be spending out at restaurants. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you are in luck. Okay, so it's May when we're making this video. So we took the average of what we spent on food for January, February, March, and April, so for four months. We've spent an average of $1,600 at the grocery store, $100 at restaurants, and about $40 at coffee shops. That's where we go when we have to upload these videos to YouTube since the internet is so much faster at the coffee shops. I'll bring something up here too. We live in a small town that has basically two grocery stores in it. One is a really great grocery store that we shop at. The other one is fine, but they also make fried chicken in there. So every time you go in there to pick up even one single thing, you leave smelling like a KFC. Not to mention they don't have as good a selection, so we shop at the other grocery store. If you live in a town that has yeah. an Aldi, a Sam's Club, whatever, a price cutter, like you could probably cut some of these costs down by price shopping too, but we're limited on the selection that we have here in our town. So an average shopping trip for us is around $200. And I'm gonna break down the categories of how that looks. That means we go twice a week? We do. <laughs> we spend about $30 on the dairy and eggs, $50 on the fruits and veggies, $35 on the meat and seafood, um, $12 what we call flavor, which is like barbecue sauces, salad dressings, red hot, things to like spice up the food. Um, about four bucks on bread type products. $11 on grains like oatmeals and rices. Um, about $22 on frozen. This is between like we enjoy to eat popsicles, um, frozen fruit, even any frozen veggies. And then about $45 on beverages. So that's like cans, canned fizzy waters, out beer, non-alcoholic beers, whatever we happen to be buying at the time. Okay, here is where your mind is really going to be blown because the common objection to making your own food is it's too expensive to eat, to buy all your food at a grocery store. Even with the price of eggs, even with the, the price of meat, even with all of these things. And like we were said before, we are pretty much limited to where we live to one grocery store. So we're like subject to whatever they're charging right now. We can drive about 45 minutes and get to a Trader Joe's, which I, I think is significantly cheaper. Across the board, we've done a little comparison before. For breakfast, what we eat every day is eggs and oatmeal. We each eat three eggs and a serving of oatmeal, or he eats three eggs and a breakfast taco. That meal cost 88 cents if I eat eggs and oatmeal and a dollar thirty if he does egg taco with cheese. <laughs> yeah. So um, we do buy the 18 pack of like, we go with the cheaper, the styrofoam con container of eggs and we buy oatmeal in like the 42 ounce jar. So broken down, that is 25 cents an egg and 13 cents a <laughs> serving of oatmeal. And then 47 cents a tortilla. So that's where you're, you're getting a little pricey on your um, breakfast. I mean, I even like the cheapest diner 
I don't know that you can get breakfast for a dollar, a full breakfast for a dollar no. anywhere. I mean, I guess if you add in the coffee, I'm up to like a dollar. Honestly, you couldn't even go into anywhere except maybe a gas station and get the smallest coffee for a dollar, yeah. let alone a meal at a place. And this is probably like a huge mind blower for people because they'll yeah. stop at a Starbucks and get a drink and a pastry. And I bet by the time you leave out of there, it's almost $10. So you could save hundreds of dollars a month just by making your own breakfast at home. Not yeah. to mention it's a healthy breakfast. I did the math on the breakfast. So 88 cents a day, that is $6 and 16 cents a week or $24 a month that we're spending on breakfast. It's like giving yourself a raise just by eating your, <laughs> your eggs and oatmeal at home. Let's talk about the way that we turn all these groceries into meals. We actually wrote something called the Digital Barbell Grocery and Meal Prep Guide, a PDF that you can download that kind of walks you through our philosophy and our process that we go through. You can download that at digitalbarbell.com slash grocery guide. But typically we'll choose a couple sources of protein for the week and we'll prepare them in sort of bulk, meaning like two to three pounds at a time. So that'll last us three, maybe four days. That way we're not having to cook meat every single meal that we want to eat. That would take too long. And then we bulk prepare a source of carbohydrates like rice, potato, another grain, something like that, and try to make that last for two to three days too. And then we'll already have tons of fresh fruit and vegetables ready to just chop up and wash at the time that we're going to eat and mix it all up into a salad, add a sauce to it as a seasoning, make it into a bowl. And basically it's taking the ingredients that are mostly already prepared, putting it together within five, seven minutes and having a meal that lines up with our goals without having to cook every single time. And you can easily change up the sources of each thing, the vegetables, the protein, the sauce, and kind of change the profile of the whole meal without all this decision-making that usually just makes you want to go through the drive-through. It's sort of like Chipotle when I think about it. You have the meat, you have the rice, you could have the beans and you have all the vegetables and you could make it a burrito, you can make it a bowl, you can make it tacos, you can make it into whatever you want, but all of the ingredients are there, which makes it easy to create your meals quickly. Yeah, the variety is really only limited by the money you wanna spend on different meats and the time that you have to prepare. So we already talked about how we bulk prepare the foods. Lunch is around 5.50 and dinner, 5.50 to $6, depending on the meat that we're using. When I compared this to going out to lunch, the place that I used to go out to lunch a lot with my coworkers was Potbelly. So I looked up Potbelly today. My mind was blown <laughs> because it's a lot more expensive than it used to be. Today, a Potbelly sandwich, the basic turkey Potbelly sandwich is $8.19. Add chips and a drink, you're up to $13.15, not even including tax. That's crazy. That is that is pretty crazy to me because you think of Potbelly or of one of those places as the cheaper place to grab a lunch. I would imagine Subway is pretty comparable to this too. We didn't look. Yeah, but... I haven't looked at Subway. I also compared it to Chick-fil-A, another popular place to go. If you get the sandwich meals, the Chick-fil-A sandwich meal, $9.45 and the grilled, the grilled meal is $11.09. This wow. is without tax and everything. And then finally, Chipotle, another common place I used to go for lunch. I can't remember how much it used to be, but today a Chipotle bowl with the chips and a drink is $17. <laughs> that's the price. That's, that's expensive. That's like if you're going to a baseball game and getting a meal. <laughs> and again, like I do want to make it clear that we still do eat out at these kinds of places sometimes, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really matter because so many of our meals are made at home, that is the exception when we do that. So it doesn't have a big impact on our budget as you saw by how much we spend out at restaurants. Yeah, I even looked up McDonald's and Taco Bell just to compare some of the fast foods that we often think are cheaper. Um, just getting, my favorite was always the quarter pounder with cheese. Quarter pounder with cheese, fries and a drink, 615. And Taco Bell, like they have a box where you can get like three tacos and a drink and stuff, 1061. That sounds just nuts. We would actually love to know how much you spend on groceries per month and how many people are in your family. So please leave a comment in the comment section below and tell us. Maybe we'll learn something too. We also wanna just point out that, you know, for us personally, we mentioned that the transition to eating mostly at home was a gradual thing. So if you're routinely eating out seven, eight, nine times a week right now, just start with one meal, you know, pick breakfast, pick lunch, commit to making that meal for yourself and make it a habit and then build on from there. 
This is how we help our clients go from giving all the control of their nutrition to the restaurants to taking it back into their own control and getting better results. I think breakfast is one of those places where the objection is often like, I don't have time to cook. Back when I owned the gym, I had to get to the gym very early. I would put it in a container, head out the door, have it in the refrigerator, and it would be ready after I coached the first class. Yep. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this peek into our grocery budget, how much it costs us to eat healthy with minimally processed foods at home. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel while you're here for all the future episodes.